The Bible says that the people who know God will be strong and carry out exploits. And this implies that we will do supernatural feats, not because of some DNA or genetic twisting, but simply because of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. But in the last days, will there appear upon the earth superhumans? Well, that's going to be the topic of this show today. And I'm so glad to have my husband on the program. And I'd like to welcome you, Peter Dorg, to our ministry center again here in the heart of Jerusalem. I'm not a superhuman, I must confess. <laughs> and you already knew that. But we're talking today about this interesting topic, frightening topic, called transhumanism. Now, it's an old idea. It's been around for a long time. In fact, you can go back to Greek mythology, and they even had a word for it. It was chimera. And what it meant was different parts of uh, a, a living organism mixed together. For example, a chimera in Greek mythology had the, the head of a lion, the body of a goat, and the tail of a serpent. That was a chimera. And since that time, since ancient Greek mythology, man has always been thinking about this idea of somehow mixing together species, interbreeding, and so forth. It's an idea that has attracted uh, science fiction writers, and there have been great movies about Well, I mean, a centaur, for so example, forth. was a half horse and a half man, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. A, a minotaur was a, the head of a, a bull and the, the, the body of a man. But uh, even in comic books, I mean, you and I probably grew up with uh, ideas of Superman, of, of people mm -hmm. with superpowers who came from another planet, or somehow they had human characteristics but in reality, because of some uh, ac accident with uh, kryptonite or whatever, they had superhuman powers and abilities. Uh, Spider-Man got bitten by, a, I think, an atomic uh, spider or something, and he had these incredible powers. Well, it's not science fiction anymore because scientists today are not only thinking about the idea of mixing up DNA, but they're actually being funded by it. Uh, we, we learned that uh, when Barack Obama became president, he vetoed a restriction that had been put on by President George Bush. George Bush said, we're not going to provide funding for any of this kind of superhuman experiments and the DNA uh, fiddling. But Barack Obama has actually, in the United States government, has actually f begun to fund projects on transhumanism. And with major advances in technology, the science fiction of the past could become science fact of the immediate future, according to this news report that I have here. And all of this is scary to me because, Peter, in the book of Revelation, in chapter 13, may I read a verse here? Uh, we know that we are headed towards the time that the Bible speaks of, the great tribulation, because history is not going to go on just forever and ever as Star Trek teaches. But there will be a culmination to history when Jesus will come back. But the Bible teaches that first, the man of sin sometimes referred to in the Bible as the Antichrist, will appear on the scene and he will cause all of the world to take his mark. And the Bible says in uh, the book of Revelation, the book of the Apocalypse in the New Testament, that this man of sin, this coming world ruler, will have a false prophet who will do a lot of provocations on behalf of this Antichrist. But more than that, he's, he's something of a marvel. He's, he, he seems to be, as the book uh, of Revelation presents him, something more than just an ordinary flesh and blood mortal human because he's able to do extraordinary feats uh, and impress the world in, in many ways with his ability to speak, his, uh, 
his ability to recover, in fact, from some sort of injury that he's going to suffer. It's, it's a rather bizarre story, but there's a lot that makes sense when you put this concept of transhumanism onto the book of Revelation. So the book of Revelation says that the Antichrist, the man of sin, will receive a mortal wound in his head. But I was referring to the false prophet who will do the public relations, okay. more or less, for this Antichrist figure who could be some sort of transhuman. He might have a bionic body part or something. But in Revelation chapter 13, uh, the Apostle John says, I'm going to start with verse 11, and I beheld another beast, this is the false prophet, coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. In other words, he's going to be like a wolf in sheep's clothing. And he spoke, even though he looked like a lamb, he spoke as a dragon. And of course, that's a demonic symbol. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him. And he caused the earth and them who dwell upon the earth to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he does great wonders so that he makes fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men and deceive them that dwell on the earth by those miracles. In verse 15, he had power to give breath to bring some sort of life into an image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. So isn't that amazing that hmm. there will be some sort of image that will be human-like and that will have some sort of breath in it? Could that be a transhuman? Well, up until the, the present day, a lot of people have been talking as if this Revelation verse is allegorical in some way. It can't be literal when we talk about somebody doing the sorts of things that the, uh, John the Divine wrote about. But now we're looking at the potential, not just the potential, but the reality of transhumans. Now, back in the, it was in the 1970s, uh, television began to introduce us to this idea with something called the Six Million Dollar Man, remember? Yes. We can take an ordinary person and we can, we can make him better. We can make him faster, stronger. Uh, he's got bionic eyes. He's got all these super strengths. He can do all sorts of amazing things. He can jump up in the air like nobody else can. And this was a combination, not just of uh, taking a, 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 an injured Air Force pilot, but putting mechanical parts, bionic parts, inside a human being. So part of transhumanism is not just mixing up DNA molecules of animals with humans, but it's also the idea of almost robotics within a human body. So a transhuman, a definition of a transhuman could be uh, an entity that has human and animal DNA are humans with robotics. That's what we're talking about here, and that's what they're actually experimenting on right now. This is the scary part, because we're, we're already looking at some, some major mishaps in messing about with the uh, combination of, of humans and animals. We went through this whole horrible experience of the mad cow disease scare when because of the co consumption of, uh, of infected animal parts, people's human brains were being terribly affected. But it's more than just a disease. What we're talking about here is the potential for people to say, let's take some of the DNA characteristics of one animal and inject them into the DNA strand, the stem cells, if you will, of a living person and see what we can create here. Can we come out with a better person? Now this is the, really, we call it, this is transhumanism, but humanism, the whole idea of humanism is that man is getting better and better on his own. He doesn't need and, God. And it's totally without ethics because it reminds you also of the Nazi era when they were experimenting on human beings and trying to make a super race 
and having uh, arrogant ideas of the super race. So if people have left uh, the Bible and no longer have a biblical foundation, they're playing with fire, Peter, and they're, they're playing with DNA and with creation and God himself, and I don't think he's going to allow mankind to experiment this way forever, but he's going to say enough and so it's another sign as part of the end time deception of the coming of the Lord. Now I wanted to point out here in this news article that um, they're saying that so many of these medical breakthroughs are positive and of course they are many medical breakthroughs are positive but just this month for example the news media are trumpeting a tiny high-tech electronic body monitor resembling a temporary skin tattoo. And it seems so good because people can have these tattoos on their head or on their hand, and when they're in a hospital, their medical records supposedly won't be muddled up. Your whole life history is on those. But it could also be, obviously, a forerunner of what the Bible refers to as the mark of the beast, and we're warned that if we take the number or the mark of the beast, we are eternally damned. That seems like a strange idea in the Bible when you read it, and of course that whole idea of the mark of the beast is again in the book of Revelation. But why, why would God be so upset with the idea of us having a, uh, a little attachment on our body for the sake of the... Uh, Buying and selling. And well, and going in the hospital. What's your mm -hmm. blood type? And if you have an accident, or they can get your whole medical history by zapping this little uh, skin graft or uh, tattoo, as they call it. But, you know, God, you're right. God is not going to put up with this. And we're looking in the back of the book here, but if you went into the front of the book, into the very first book of Genesis, you would find there are some very strange stories of men mixing with, well, Angels. yeah, angelic beings, giants, there are different descriptions here, and we are not exactly certain what we're talking about here, but obviously there came to be a situation where there was a, shall we say, a race of people on this planet at one time who were just like these transhumans. They and were super this was humans. genetic tampering. Exactly. And, uh, you, you take, for example, the popular song of Lady Gaga, Born This Way. This is all part of the conditioning that is happening in society to think that we need to uh, morph, there needs to be a metamorphosis of a new race. And this is the way man is thinking, and this is the way man is projecting. And just as in the book of Genesis, God said, enough, I'm going to destroy this race. Jesus said, it's going to be the same way. Remember in Genesis, God told Noah to build a boat, and he sent a flood to destroy the race that had been tampered with. He had to wipe the whole thing out and from Jesus beginning to end. And Jesus said it would be the same thing as in the days of Noah, so it shall be the same kind of conditions, he says, when he will return to set up his rule here in Jerusalem. That's the good news, that he is coming back, and he's going to rule from the throne of his father David from Mount Zion here in Jerusalem. Christine, I'm going to remind you of a film that we saw back in 1973, and we went to see it, and I didn't really want to see this movie, but I had the opportunity to meet the, the director of the movie. Uh, he was a British uh, director named Lindsay Anderson, and the film was called Oh Lucky Man. And I remember that film, Peter, disturbed <laughs> me so much. It, it seemed absolutely it implausible. it was about transhumans. It, there was the one scene where the the protagonist of the film is traveling around England and he's trying to find a job. And he goes to the Lake District and somehow breaks into a secret laboratory. And do you remember the scene? He he's breaks into an operating theater. 
And there are all of these half human, half pig bodies yeah. lying in beds and, and they are tied down in their beds and they're crying for help. And it was so eerie, it was so scary because you could see that you get a couple of mad scientists without <laughs> any morals and this is where mankind is heading with experimentation. That was 19, that was well, 40, over 40 years ago, 1973, and it seems absolutely stupid, preposterous, that you could sew the head of a human onto the body of a pig. But when, obviously, our, our hero of the film came across this, he just ran for his life. I mean, it was just absolutely a staggering film to watch that. But I'm saying this is not just Star Trek futuristic uh, implausible science fiction now. There's a lot of films out. If Some of you may have seen a film called Blade Runner. It was a very popular film in the 80s with Harrison Ford trying to figure out who the humans are and who the replicants are. And they and, were called replicants. And he replicants. fell in love with a replicant, didn't he? Much to his surprise. He didn't even know she was a replicant. She was so perfectly human in so many ways that he's shocked to discover in the film. I shouldn't give the plot away. I won't. I, in fact, I can't even remember seeing the movie, but I've read about it so many times. Nevertheless, here we have, uh, in popular culture today, all of these uh, Star Trek, Star Wars, uh, Will Smith movies, I, Robot, yes. Mat The Matrix was and, and another one. And you know one. what? It seems so implausible. It, it seems just like entertainment and fantasy, but according to the news reports that we've gathered, it's amazing to me that people in the Pentagon and people high up in the military are actually talking about breeding soldiers who will be uh, great men of war because they will have human bodies but the eyesight of an animal, uh, an animal whose eyesight is sharper and better and say the sense, uh, the smelling sense of an animal so that they will be better equipped but what about their souls? I mean, they're just breeding these human beings without any thought that <laughs> man is a three-part being, a body with a spirit and a soul? This is really frightening. Let me put this into perspective. If you were a general sitting in the Pentagon in Washington and a scientist came to you and said, I have a magic vial here, not magic, but I have a, a, a chemical here. If I inject this into your soldiers, they will be stronger, faster. They'll be just like the six million dollar man. And the general will say, well, that would be great to have on the battlefield somebody superior like that. And we already see this whole frustration in sports today. Everybody is so obsessed with the idea of how fast somebody can run a hundred yards or 100 but, meters. But you see though, honey, they're not talking about steroids. They're talking about breeding. Well, that's what we have at the moment, you see, is that to, to run a tenth of a second faster, people are willing to take all sorts of drugs and enhancements to be the victor. And six months later, we find out that they were cheating because they used these illegal drugs and so forth. But this is the aspiration of so much of mankind. We want to have superhuman powers. We want to be able to run and win the race. Not the race that Paul talks about, but run the, the race of uh, athletics or to, to be superior in any way we can. That was the view, the vision of the, the Nazi experimenters, Dr. Mengele and so forth. It's the view of a lot of people today in the military, in the scientific community, in the universities who are considering what, how much we could improve mankind if we could do all these sorts of things. But isn't it interesting that the only way that mankind can really be improved is for him to have a metamorphosis, but that is to be changed inwardly. That Man is a sinner. The Book of Romans says that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I mean, all of these genetic engineers want to go a step higher. They want to become godlike. But they have missed Christian theology 
which makes us born again new creatures. The Bible says that if any man is in Messiah, in Christ Jesus, he has become a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, all things have become new. He is a transhuman in a sense that he has become a um, immortal being. His, his body is going to die, but his spirit has reached immortality. And isn't it sad that this is considered just an old book, but <laughs> to be transformed into is, is better than being transhuman. Yes. Is, yes, it's a much higher plane yeah. of existence. And you know, the other scary part about this experimentation today is how the scientists are also trying to manipulate the food we eat. There have been tests done and scientists were excited to discover that by feeding a certain uh, breed of uh, mutated potato to rats, they could reduce the rat's uh, brain size and so forth and make the rats uh, less of a danger to humankind. So they're arguing that we ought to be fixing up our food in many different ways. We ought to have genetically modified food, genetically modified people. This is the world we're living in today. And it's not going to go on much longer because as we've seen in Genesis, God just is not going to put up with mankind's foolishness to say, I'm God, I can create something and not recognize that God created us perfect in the beginning. Well, I, I want you to remember, my friend, that Jesus himself, when he was petitioned by his disciples and they wanted to know the signs that would tell us when Jesus would return to set up his rule from here in Jerusalem. He said there would be wars and rumors of wars and, and tsunamis and many of the signs that we've already seen. But he also said it would be as in the days of Noah and like the days of Lot. And in the days of Lot, there was all kinds of sexual perversion. And in the days of Noah, there was this gene genetic engineering because angels were somehow merging with human beings. And God stopped all of that with the flood. So Jesus said that right before he comes, he indicated there would be some sort of genetic manipulation again. And God, who is our creator, made man in his image. He didn't make man to be half animal and half man. And so we know that Jesus is coming soon and we want you to be ready for his coming because there's so much confusion. Is a new age coming? Is a new world order coming? Well, there are satanic forces that would like to see it that way. But actually, Jesus Christ is coming back very soon. And he's either come, coming as the King of Kings and your Lord, or he's coming as judge. And I think it's important that you should also be uh, making your children aware of this whole issue because they are being very much targeted today in school and not only that, but in the media and particularly in music. You were telling me about a, a song that uh, the popular singer Lady Gaga had yes. put out. What was I that mentioned all about? it early in the program, uh, Born This Way. And some people say it has to do with uh, unisex lifestyle, but it also is giving subliminal messages that transhumans are on the way. And so many young people are being conditioned through media, through songs, to be expecting this kind of new world order. How important it is that we have a family altar, that we have family prayer, as you and I had with our children, because the Bible says to raise up a child in the way he shall go, and when he's older, he will not depart from it. So these are the signs, one of the signs of the coming of the Lord Jesus back to rule on this earth. Peter, it's been really great to have you again on the program here in our Exploits Ministry Center in Jerusalem. And can you tell us just a little bit about uh, some of our upcoming conferences or how people can get a copy of our newsletter? 
I wish we had one here, but we had a guest earlier, and as soon as he saw your newsletter on, the, on our table, he said, I've got to have that to take to my house and put on my coffee table. Uh, our Exploits magazine, it's an eight-page magazine. We make it freely available, and all you have to do is uh, let us have your contact details, and you can contact us at Christine's website, or actually better if they wrote to you personally in an email. Yes, uh, my email is very simple. It's just christine at jerusalem.com. And we do invite you to go to the website, www.exploits.tv, because you can watch this program again if you're still a little bit confused about transhumans. And we have a whole library of other programs about end time prophecy, about healing, that you can watch 24 7 at our website on the Jerusalem channel. And that's uh, www.exploits.tv. And we hope you'll find lots of resources there as well as uh, lots of Christine's books that uh, you'll find very interesting. A few DVDs and CDs, but basically we just like you to come and visit and uh, browse around and, and find some interesting uh, material, including your blog, uh, articles that you write, and of course order the And newsletter. we want to invite you to be a part of our prayer conferences here in Jerusalem because it's so important to put your feet inside the gates of Jerusalem because Psalm 122 exhorts us to do that and also to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And so when we come up and we're watchmen upon the walls of this city, we get a better grasp of end time events and a sense that Jesus is coming soon and so we need to number our days that we can get a heart of wisdom. Well, thank yes. you. Well, uh, don't forget, I, I just want to add this, that uh, pray for the peace of Jerusalem is not a suggestion, it's a command from God Almighty Himself. So please remember that in your prayers. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And it says, they shall prosper that's that right. love you, Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all the time we have in this program on exploits. Thank you for joining us. I'm Christine Darg. And I'm Peter Darg saying God bless you from Jerusalem. And Shalom.